Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot, Abhijit. Uh, so uh, now that I know that you guys can hear me, uh, just wanted to confirm people who would like to see my pretty face can look at my face as well. And uh, people who would like to see the uh, presentation in the background, can you guys look at see the presentation? The opening of the presentation is Career Opportunities in Financial Market. Fantastic, Prashad. Thanks a lot for your reply. Now, let's get it going. So, I'm going to take approximately 60 minutes of your time, and I'm going to respect uh, that time uh, foundation which we'll have together. And we're going to talk about what are the various opportunities for youngsters or for people who want to get into financial markets as, uh, as full-time professional and uh, see uh, what really has this lovely market has in offering to us considering that the future of India, the growth story of India has to complement, has to sustain with financial market as one of the major cornerstones. So uh, let's uh, get it going. So I'm going to uh, keep my presentation at the base of presentation and then as and when you guys have question, you can just throw the question in the chat window. I can see your question right away and I'll stop and respond to your query. Okay, so, uh, so my first thing, first image to you is what is this? It looks to be a very, very simple, uh, simple image which clearly defines that this is a marketplace where different variety of fish is available and there's a vendor who is selling those fish and waiting for the buyer to come and buy those fish, right? Now, try to draw the same analogy in financial market. So, this is typically image of financial market when we think about financial market. So, there, there are various buyers and sellers of financial products uh, all coming together in one marketplace with different technology as well as different ways of executing the deals. Now, if you classify that into two different forms, uh, there are the buyers of capital and there are the sellers of capital. Now, the buyers of capital are typically the guys who are entrepreneurs, who want to, who want money for the purpose of doing business. At the same time, the buyers of capital is also government who needs money to combat the fiscal deficit which the government has to run because the revenue which the government relies and the expenditure which the government has to spend, there is always a mismatch in those and government comes to the market to borrow from the market participants. The intermediaries are people who facilitate this transition and the sellers of capital are typically the people who have capital and who would like to put their capital in market and generate extra return out of their capital. So those are, those are typically the investors or investors they can route through representatives like mutual funds, like banks, etc. Now, if, you, if I can portray an image of bias of the capital, so you can see Dhruva Ambani, he is the uh, he is the pioneer of equity cult in India. Then you have Ratan Tata. Obviously, now the name will change, but I still prefer to keep Ratan Tata as a representative of Tata Group. Then you have Anand Mahindra. Then you have Sunil Bhalte Mittal. Then you have, of course, Mr. Bill Gates and Pranav Da. Pranav Da is typically representing the government of India because all the bond issues or all the borrowings the government is doing, ultimately Pranavda is the signature to all the borrowings which the government has, is, is actually doing. Now, if you see the sellers of capital, they can be a retail janta who have a lot of capital at disposable and they want to invest that capital to generate additional return. Then you have institutions like State Bank, which is taking money from people in terms of savings, in terms of fixed deposit. And they are trying to generate return out of those savings and fixed deposit by providing fund or capital to people who are in need of capital. Then obviously there's Life Insurance Corporation which is taking premium and they're using that premium to invest either in the form of debt or in the form of equity so that they can realize additional money. Uh, uh, they can realize additional money from uh, the uh, capital which is given to them. Rakesh Jujwal is a known face in market now and he is obviously one of the big investors which we have in India. And uh, Warren Buffett, a uh, totally media guy, he is one of the most successful investors globally. And this gentleman, not many people know him, but he is also one of the biggest, uh, one of the most famous investors, but not very, very media guy. Uh, his name is Peter Lynch. He has some really, really nice books or investments which I would recommend to you at the end of this presentation. Okay, so who are the intermediaries? Typically the exchanges like NSC, BSC, SX, NCDX, then you have brokers like ICICI, Sheikh Khan, Religare, 
uh, India InfoLine, these people are typically the intermediaries who are facilitating the transactions. Okay, okay, okay. So the last person is Peter Lynch. So Peter Lynch was the uh, chief investment officer of. Uh, he was Peter. He was chief investment officer of Fidelity for a long period of time. One of the most successful investment manager in the in the world. Okay. Uh, then you have SMC as a broker, Kotak as a broker, and then you have depository participants like CDSL and NSDL. They basically are responsible for holding your shares in dematerialization, in dematerialization form. So these are the people, the whole ecosystem which is facilitating the financial market buys and the selling part. So overall structure of capital market, if I can sum up in the slide, the buyers are the entrepreneurs through financial institutions like bank, the form of loan. So an entrepreneur typically is a person who has an idea, who wants to do something. Now the flow of an entrepreneurship goes like this. So if I have an idea and if I want to, if I, if I believe that this product will sell in market, I will typically put some money of mine into market, which is, uh, which is the first source of funding, which is my saving, right? After the product is he's taken some shape, I will typically go and find out my relative who would be willing to lend to me. So I'll go to my parents, I'll go to my elder brother, I'll go to my father-in-law to take some money, uh, which will be in the form of loan so that I can do my business. After a point of time when the business is actually taking decent share, you would like to take external money from people. So who are the people who will give you external money? Typically you go to a bank and ask for some kind of a loan. Now bank will, bank will obviously ask for some kind of a collateral because until as you have collateral, bank will not be comfortable to give you loan. If your product is based out of an asset, so you have to buy a building or you have to establish an industry factory, then you can get a collateralized loan from the bank. But if it's a service sector business idea, for example, you think that you want to launch a dot-com, whether banks will be comfortable giving you loan for a dot-com? I don't think so because they need collateral. So what do you do? If bank is not the right source, then you go to private equity investors, a big wealthy investors or the institutions who hold money for those investors and they will lend you money in the form of equity, right? That means they will participate in the business with you. After again a considerable period of time when you need your business to go to the next level, either vertically or horizontally, then you obviously would like more money. Who gives you more money then? Then you go to a private equity investors who are typically a large size investors and then ultimately when you need a lot of money, you go to public and large just like the way Reliance did and public and large will give you a lot of money and you come out with an IPO and you ultimately list yourself in the secondary market which facilitates buyers and sellers of that equity share to get in and get out of the market. So this is a typical flow of entrepreneurship which uh, the capital flow of entrepreneurship which facilitates the whole entrepreneurship process. So either you go to a bank or you go to a stock market where you can buy the equity or entrepreneur can take a loan from the debt market. If the entrepreneur has a good credit profile, it can go to directly to the debt market and take money or it can, uh, government can go to the debt market as it typically does and take money from the debt market. Okay, now intermediaries are the banks, the exchanges, the brokers and investment bankers or merchant bankers who are typically the people who facilitate the, uh, facilitate the resourcing of money for these entrepreneurs. Who are the sellers, the retail guys directly or the mutual fund through the collective investment schemes. That means all the retailers, they give money to mutual fund and the mutual fund manager ultimately has to decide who the money, whom the money has to be given. Then you have a bank and the investment managers who themselves have a lot of money and they would like to lend that money to public and large. Okay, so in, if we classify the market into two different forms, the primary market and the secondary market. The primary market is essentially the IPO market where new securities is issued by the company to the investors and the secondary market is after the new securities is issued, it is listed in the secondary market which is typically the stock exchanges where the buyers and the sellers of the equity can exit or enter the market depending upon their view about the business or view about the company. Okay? Okay. If you talk about the financial market, there are various components of financial market. 
Now briefly touching on to those components, you have heard about the stock market, then you have bond market which will help people to borrow money, then there is a commodity market which will help the corporates to hedge their commodities exposure, then you have money market which will help people to take short term money. So difference between bond market and money market is, money market is a short term borrowing which includes call money market, repo market, so these are typically till a period of say six months to one year and bond market is typically beyond one year. So if you are issuing a long term debt paper that comes into the bond market. Then you have derivative market which facilitates hedging uh, for, for corporates, for HNIs, for individuals. Then you have futures exchanges which again uh, which again help you to hedge your position. Then insurance market and, and also the foreign exchange market which facilitates the global trade through foreign exchange. Uh, to foreign exchange bid and ask pricing. So we are going to discuss these markets in brief before we go to the main presentation which is the career opportunities. Okay? Is everyone with me? Fine? Great. So let me ask you this question and I would need response from you guys in the chat window. Which of the following according to you is the largest market among these four? What's your, what's your sense? Okay, Prashad, currency according to you, okay? Okay, Somesh, you think stock, okay? What about other people? Bond, Siddharth, okay? And obviously, if I get some more name, okay, Puja, stock, great. Okay, Anjan, for you, stock, okay? Okay, so no one really believes that currency, uh, no one really believes that the commodity market is the biggest market, right? Okay, let me solve this, uh, this uh, query. Uh, the biggest market in the world is the bond market. Now, why? Because bond is the genesis. Bond is the genesis of all business activities. So the first... Okay, I think someone has just... Said, 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 I think someone has just entered. Okay, thanks. So the biggest market is actually the bond market uh, because this becomes the genesis of all activity. The first source of funding is always, okay. always the bond. The second market globally is the currency market because of the sheer size of the global trade. The third market is the commodities market and the fourth market is the stock market. Now, why is it important for us to know about this? Because in India, it's actually the reverse way around. Stock market is the number one market in India. Then comes your commodities, then currency, and the last market is the bond market. And there's a reason behind it. A, obviously, India is a developing economy where equity market will always be uh, will be a lead factor. But there is a huge opportunity for people who would like to take bond market and currency market as a career opportunity. Because it's a new market, uh, government is framing policies to promote bond market in India. So as a career side of the market, someone who is very interested in building career as anything should focus on bond market, currency market, commodity market, and then equity market the last. Okay, so market is jungle, right? Everyone knows about it. There are bulls, there are bears, and there are bull in the system, and there are obviously herds. Now these herds are typically the guys who are like, who wants, who believes, and who would like to follow the bulls and bears. Right, and obviously, as the name suggests, that these are the guys who are not the smartest of the lot, and they and ultimately end up losing money in the system. Bull is obviously when things are positive, and beer is obviously when things are going down. In fact, ironically, a couple of days ago, I was thinking loud that why market going up is termed as bull, and market going down is termed as beer, and I read somewhere that actually why market is going up is bull because of the horns which the bull has and why market going down is beer because of the because of the kind of nose which a beer has. So this is this was quite a revelation for me but now I'm clear why it is called bull and beer. Okay and obviously the Raja of the jungle right the share. Can anyone make a guess who is the Raja of the jungle in the national market? Anyone want to share? What do you think? Anjan? Jesse, the question is, 
in financial market, who do you think is the Raja of the jungle? Who is the lion in financial market? FIs are the <laughs> Anjan, I agree. FIs have to be the land because they literally control financial markets in India. But anyway, that's not the right answer. I wish I agree that. Investment bankers are the lions. I think Siddharth wants to work with investment banking company. That's why they, he wants to call them lion. Okay, no, no, no. Investment bankers are not the lion. They are actually the rats. <laughs> they are the rats. Any other answer? Jossi, what do you think? Who are the lions? Okay, uh, lion is the king of the jungle and the king of the jungle in India is are these guys. Now the money market <laughs> is controlled by RBI, equity market is controlled by SEBI, insurance market is controlled by IRDA, commodities by FMC. Now, even, now FMC will merge with SEBI as you must be following in the US. And there are other regulators for different markets. So essentially the lion of jungle are the regulators and we have to follow the rule book which the lion is establishing for us. India in the last 10 years have progressed phenomenally in terms of regulatory framework and trust me the whole world looks at India when it comes to designing the regulatory rules and frameworks. So RBI is a great regulator, SEBI is a great regulator and we should be, we should feel comfortable because the fact that regulator is very, very active in the national market. Rather, as an intermediary, at times we get, we get so, uh, we get so boggled down with the regulatory actions on us. But then, after the end of the day, we realize that this is good for overall market growth. Okay. So, what's the perception about the stock market among retail people? So, what do you think, Siddharth? Uh, what is stock market? It's a gambler's den, isn't it? People want to speculate, it's a gamble, it's a horse race, there is no logic works, it's so random, whenever you buy, oh, it's three cards, <laughs> okay, so ish. without knowledge, it is a gambling, okay, Prashad. So Siddharth, what do you, uh, would you like to, uh, would you like to uh, talk something about, uh, yeah, would you like to take a lead and talk about it? Do you have mic with you? Both, I'm, I'm happy that you raised this point that it's not really the gambling. Do you have mic, Siddharth? Can I have, uh, can, can anyone activate mic of Siddharth? Siddharth? Hello? Yes, yeah, Siddharth. Hello, great, great, we can hear yeah. you. Come on, tell me. Why do you think it's not really a gambling? Because uh, I think the stock market is, uh, progressively uh, increasing its worth uh, day by day. Uh, if we see, uh, for, for example, the S&P 500 index, uh, from uh, the earlier times to uh, present, it is consistently uh, improving uh, uh, its uh, share. For example, the growth rate of the S&P is somewhere around 12% or something like that. So I don't think it's like gambling or something like that because a, uh, speculators and people who uh, invest in short period they may lose money but uh, in the long run if someone uh, keeps on investing and does good then I think uh, they can actually make money. Fantastic Siddharth, I'm very glad to hear this from you because we have for the last eight years my academy has been trying extremely hard to convince retail audience that this is the place where you can make money if you are acting sensibly. I'm not thinking about short-term speculation. I'm glad that uh, you have made this point. Uh, I can see Anjan also Thank making you. a valid point here. So can can we mute? Uh, can you can we uh, activate Anjan and mute Siddharth? Anjan, are you there? I want to hear them because they are. I'm glad that they are making this point. Anjan, yeah. would you be in a position to elaborate? Hello. Yeah, we can Hello. hear you and go ahead. Go ahead, we can hear you. Yeah, for gambling, only entry is there, so no exit there. And then second, it is open. Stock amount, exit and entry and exit is there. You should require yeah. knowledge, you require knowledge, fundamental, everything, uh, background of the company. So you should, we also should be educated. Absolutely. And Anjan, I'll give you an example of a stock called Satyam Computers. Everyone knows about it? Yeah? Yeah, so I know, sir. Yeah. yeah, so when 
when Raju made that statement, I was there in front of the screen. And when Ma Raju gave a disclosure and that yes. disclosure was sent to BSC, I was there in yes. front of the screen and I saw CNBC uh, uh, mentioning that, uh, that, yeah. that Raju has done something like this. And the prices of Satyam crashed like madness. But still, yes. if the news came at around 180 rupees, you still got an opportunity to exit Satyam at 140 or 120. At least you were able to salvage some value out of your investment. But in case of gambling, if there is something insider going on between the horse and the yes. owner, you really yes. can't have any control. You can't. So that's yes. a brilliant point, uh, Anjan. Thanks a lot for participating. Yes. Thanks, sir. Okay. So, so many questions. Uh, Hello? Yeah, Anjan, uh, we take, uh, you have any query? No, when it came to 11, we, I and uh, my friends started off buying at 11. <laughs> yeah. But, but we, we, we missed that bus also, sir. Yeah, so Swamesh, you are absolutely right. Satyam fell down to 11 rupees, but it gave enough opportunity to, for people to quit. It gave enough price point when when uh, it exit, uh, people could have exit. But 11 rupees, smart guys, they did enter the stock at 11 rupees or 20 rupees or 25 rupees. It stayed at that price for from 20 to 25 or 30 rupees for a long period of time. But anyway, that's a separate discussion. The whole objective to highlight that was that stock market is actually a science. And there is a combination, there is a bit of arts involved, but uh, if you do it, if you practice, if you do it properly, why you can definitely become a good professional in this. So this is a typical perception that I'm much more comfortable putting my money into a football bet than into the stock market. That's such a poor, it's such a lame perception about market. And as a market professional, we are very happy that most of the, pe most of the people have believed this way, that's why Maximum people are not there in market, and that's why we can still make money. A marketplace where maximum people will come in, the chances of making money reduces considerably, isn't it? So as a market professional, we are happy that retail people believe that market is speculation. Okay, Siddharth, I'll get back to you on this point. The stock market is also the most volatile. I agree, and the volatility is something which drives, which drives people to participate. I'm going to share this point later, but let me proceed with my presentation. So the question which is there in everybody's mind is, can we predict the market, right? And can market be analyzed? Is it an art or a science? Now, sorry. Okay, Prashad, thanks a lot for that comment. Uh, I would uh, appreciate if uh, there is specific questions uh, you posted here. We as a, as, a, as a firm, we are totally committed to administer education and we'll make sure that we, at least we will be catalyst. We will be catalyst in making people not to lose in money market. Making money in market is purely your effort, your intellect. But not losing market is something which we can definitely help people in large. And we have been helping them. So let's go to the next part uh, that can be predicted in the market. Okay, so let us do a small exercise. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this, but just to give you a perspective of how do we value uh, a financial asset. So let's take an example of uh, example of a cow. Okay. Oh, Prashad has already uh, started pouring his answers. So obviously one of the points he mentioned is the liters of milk the cow is giving per day. Right. Any other point? Guys, participate. What do you think? What are the other parameters you will consider to value a cow? Okay. Healthy. So whether the cow has, so what's the age profile of a cow? If the cow is young and healthy, the value will be different. If the cow is old and not very healthy, it has disease, the value of the cow will be less. Okay. Age, Anjan, very right. Breed, fantastic. A cow from New Zealand will be much more priced than a cow from India because of the quality and the breed which it comes from. By Baba Ramdev, amount of urine, fantastic. So if I can extend that logic to the output which the cow is giving. It can be urine, it can be milk, it can be it can be anything because cow is the only animal which, which uh, from the birth to the death they just keep on giving to mankind. So if you can value all the outputs which the cow is giving, what can be the uh, realization from the cow, right? Okay. Kal Kalparuksha. What is that? Kalparuksha? 
Probably anyways, I'll get I'll I'll discuss with you later on one on one regarding this. So so broader parameters which are can be which we have you guys have uh, mentioned production value amount of the milk likely to be produced in future lactation period age of the cow breed of the cow price of the milk in the future. So if there is an expectation that the price of milk will increase in future, you would like to value the cow today much more because future realization from that cow will go up. So not just the quantity of the milk which the cow is producing is important, but the price at which the, the milk will be sold in the market is also very, very important. What is the cost involved in, uh, in maintaining the cow, in buying the cow or, or in, in, yeah, in maintaining the cow? The number of calves which the cow can produce. So the more number of cow, calves the cow can produce, obviously, that is you would like to play, pay more premium to that particular cow. And what is the terminal value? That's, that's the fact of life. Ultimately, a cow is sold for various purposes. I don't want to talk about it here. But what is the expected terminal value of the cow for those purposes? Right? So if you see, whatever parameters you are thinking from a cow perspective, the same parameter you have to use for the company perspective. So what is the production value of a company? How much, uh, what, is the, what has been the experience of company and what is the expected age expectancy of the company? What is the price of the product which the company is producing? And is it expected that the product will continue or the product will have a higher price of additions? All these things put together will give you enough data to use any of these methods to value the cow or the company. The valuation can be the future earnings of the company or the cow presented in the current form because all those future earnings will be in terms of future rupee rate or in terms of future value of money. That value of money if you are buying today, the value of money will be discounted at today's rate, isn't it? Because the value of a money today and tomorrow will obviously have a differential. It cannot be the same value. Today, if I give you 100 rupees, tomorrow you are not expected to return me 100, 100. It has to be 100 plus interest, right? So tomorrow's realization or future realization has to be discounted back at today's price to arrive at the value of that particular money. What is a comparable relative valuation? So the simple form of valuation is if my neighbor cow is X and it has these, these, these qualities and the price of that cow is 30,000 because my cow is with these, these, these qualities and expected higher realization, I will price my cow at 35,000 or 36,000 depending upon my perception and depending upon how comfortable the seller is to sell that cow to me. And the last is the worst case liquidation. That if everything goes wrong, nothing is working, what is the ultimately the asset realization of a cow that Kuchini other the cow if the cow is not giving anything, then what is the replacement cost of buying another cow against this cow? So the same concept has to be applied in current companies as well. Now again, continuing with the perception theory, for some people this woman is a is a is a very uh, is a good looking young woman. For some people, the same lady can be an old age lady, right? Because of the gray hair which is getting reflected. Okay, for some people, uh, what's written here is fusion. For some people, what's written here is optical, right? So for some people, it is good. For some people, it is evil. That's why the market is. And that drives any marketplace. It's not just financial market. Financial market is exactly like any other marketplace. As an industrialist, you buy goods and process them so that you can have a realization from your sale, right? As a farmer, you produce farm products so that you can realize a good value in future. So ultimately, everyone is speculating in their business. Financial market is exactly the same and it is a business on its own. Okay? Now, if you see the flow of emotion which goes inside the market and if a professional is totally involved into the market, the most important place where you need a better state of mind is these places because these are the places where people typically lose their nerve and they want to quit the market. And But these are the places when you need to enter the market because ultimately the market which is here has to go up here because of the typical cyclical effect which any market or any 
any being in the world will have to face because of the cyclical nature of our environment, right? Okay, how do you measure the wealth in stock market? Well, stock market measurement of the wealth is a benchmarking which comes from market capitalization. There are how many shares of a company do you have? What is the price of that share in the market? You multiply those two comes the market capitalization, which is essentially the presumably the wealth which these people have with them. Now, this actually wealth is not the cash which the people are having. It's a it's an asset value. Tomorrow, if someone or one of them decides that he wants to sell 10% stake of his in stock market, immediately the stock market price will crash because of their decision to sell the stake. So these figures, they don't talk much about their wealth. It is more about their, uh, their, uh, their image in the society that these people are worth so much money. But at the same time, for the commercial transaction purpose, these figures become very important because the commercial, the banks, the lenders, the equity holders, they will give value to their wealth by, uh, by these particular numbers. In the world, obviously the richest guy uh, is Bill Gates, and then we have Carlos Slim uh, from Russia, then we, sorry, from Mexico, then we have Warren Buffet, and there are other guys with different business orientation who have generated wealth for themselves. But if you see the core parameter of measuring the wealth comes from market capitalization, which is nothing but a derivation of stock market. A large cap is typically uh, companies which are well set and they are the lead companies in a country. Mid cap are companies which have done good and now they have reached the stage where they can push themselves to become a large cap. And small cap are companies who have just entered the market with a top line of say 100 crores, 150 crores and they would like to become mid cap and eventually become a large cap company. What is an index? An index is a parameter of performance of countries, uh, of the balance sheet of companies in India. Sensex and Nifty are the major indices which are used to measure the performance of companies or the stock market companies in India. Okay, now let's go to the career side because that was the basic understanding of market which was important before we graduate to the next level. Now the basic question which comes in everyone's mind is, I'm a graduation student, why should I follow market? because I'm a student right now, I'm pursuing education, market does not help me because I'm not anyways directly involved in market. Now that's a conception, poor conception people have, this conception people have. Following the market is to develop a habit, following the market is to follow the economics, which goes hand in hand because until this you're following economics, you will not be able to plan your career properly. Not that economics is not optional. It is indispensable. So everyone has to have the knowledge of marketing economics to go to the next level in their career. And all the businesses are market dependent. All. If market is not doing good, not a single business can do good. Thus your career is also market dependent, whether you like it or not. So even if you are from any field of industry, if you even if you are graduating or you are pursuing education in any field, knowledge of market is quite an essential part of your, of your career plan. Okay, so this is the first part of the presentation which is done. Now the second part is, we try to find out what are the various career opportunities available in market and what are the various qualifications or various tools needed to excel in those career opportunities. So before I go to, the, uh, go to this part, do you guys have any specific query related to the last part? Then I can take those, those queries now. Anyone? Please avoid questions like where do you see market is going and all those things. No, that is not something which is scope of today's discussion. No? Okay. Very nice. Anyone else? Any question? No one? Okay. So, okay. So let's go to the next part, which is the uh, Okay, so let's go to the next part. Thank you, Prashad, for that feedback. Uh, I, it, it's always good to get compliments. Thank you. <laughs> and then go to the next part, which is the period of opportunities in financial market. Now, let me see. 
I don't know the demographic profile of people who have logged in today, but just to get a perspective that how many people want to make a career in finance? Obviously, people would like because people have logged in, so most of the people would like to make a career in finance. What are the traditional and the evolving careers in finance? Now, this is a slide which is the most important slide which you should register in your mind. This is this is the ready recorder slide for you, and if you want to take a print screen image of this slide. Keep it with you. Or, in fact, if I'm not wrong, my team is going to share this video with you in YouTube. So, get back to our team and find out the link which we will be sharing in our YouTube channel, and you can keep it for your future references. In fact, we already have around 35, 40 videos, webinar videos available on the YouTube channel for your future references. So, what are the traditional careers in finance, investment banking, or broking services? Uh, sorry, investment management or the broking services, investment banking, private equity and corporate finance, research and fund managers. So these are traditional careers in finance which people aspire to get into. What are the evolving careers in finance? And these are the careers options you should definitely look at for yourself if you are thinking of a serious career. One is the treasury, the other one is the risk management, and the third one is the professional trading. These are very very good occupations, and these are futuristic occupations. Which will last for a long period of time because of the evolving nature of finance. Okay, let's talk about banking, uh, the investment banking side of banking. So typically, an investment banker is expected to do these things. So an investment banker help, helps corporate to to source finance as well as to utilize that finance for other purposes. An investment banker helps companies to facilitate mergers and acquisitions. An investment banker would help a company to to come out with an IPO or to come out with a secondary market operations through capital market division. An investment banking will help company to sell their ideas to potential investors or to potential lenders in the market. An investment banker helps a company to create some kind of a syndication so that a borrowing proper borrowing can be facilitated. An investment banker also. Trades in the stocks of the companies so that there is a proper liquidity available, please, and there is a proper entry and exit available for the investors. An investment banker also provides research service to the company. Research can be business research, can be competitor research, or it can be uh, marketing research. Or they can also provide company with the stock investment research. So investment banking is actually the complete bucket of service of available to the Uh, to the companies or HNIs with regards to various various modes of getting the fund and deploying the fund. Okay, so these are all good, well-paid job profile available. Where there are some big names like Goldman, which are international names, Avendis, Rothschild, Bank of America, Deutsche. These are big investment banking firms. And then there are some big Indian names like Kotak, Inam, and uh, uh, Edelweiss. These are Really, really good firms who have done wonders in India as an investment banking boutique firms. What is the difference between commercial banking and investment banking? Commercial banking is more taking deposit, giving loan, contract between two parties, and earning profit from interest. So their revenue model is to generate net interest income. So they take deposit at a lower rate, and they give loan at a higher rate, and they manage the loan book and manage the NPAs, non-performing asset. And they manage the risk related to the non-performing asset through their risk department, right? Whereas the investment banker, they do not take deposit. They act as an intermediary between buyers and sellers. They provide advisory services, and typically their income is a fee-based income. However, same brand can be into commercial banking or it can be investment banking as well. For example, Axis Bank is a commercial banking company. At the same time, they have Axis Capital, which is into investment banking services. Typically, the uh, notion, the language which is used in investment banking is on the sales side. People who sell the idea are brokers or intra, or introduce investment banking firms. People who buy the ideas are investors, institutional investors, QIBs, hedge funds, mutual funds. So these are the people who buy the ideas and they pay fees to the seller of the ideas. This is the typical organization structure of investment banking. So there are associates who join at an entry level. Then you become an analyst as you progress. Then you become a vice president. So as you know, there are five people who initially start, and then the three people 
who progress in the organization or there is lateral recruit of those uh, those uh, chairs and ultimately there is boss who is the who is the director or md who forms this boutique investment banking company so for becoming an investment banker the common qualifications requirement is either you are an mba in finance from a good institute because investment banking is a limited job available so they always prefer to take the best guys in the industry or you can also become aspire to become investment banker through international cfa qualification as far as your graduation is concerned if you are bcom and uh, you have done your cfa it's fine if you are bcom have done an mba finance fine or if you are from engineering background you have done mba finance that's even better or if you have done economics throughout and your masters in economics the people also prefer those kind of profiles because the diversified investment banking profiles help them to do diversified activity work okay when check capital in private equity you remember i talked about the complete capital flow of an entrepreneur where venture capital becomes an important part of the working and the private equity uh, is the next stage of after the venture capital when the fund is to be procured so typically these are the stages which where funding is uh, funding is involved so the first stage is a bootstrapping stage where the personal savings and relative borrowing relatives like father in law makes a very important role here and converting an idea into the minimum viable products so at a good stepping stage you take money from your close associates and create a minimum viable product in a seed in a seed capital stage you convert the minimum viable product into a marketable product and the company starts generating some sales or their interest from the clients at a venture capital stage you take the growth path by expanding through departments right and then you form different key uh, l2s in your department l3s in your department and they take care of the businesses and you increase the team uh, team strength then you go to the private equity uh, so this is a stage when your sales if you talk about these sales this is a stage when your sales is zero this is a stage when your sales is say 1 to 2 this is a stage when your sales is almost 5 this is a stage when your sales is almost 50 and the last is when you are exhausted with all the private equity investment options you go to public and large With us, when your sales is 500, and you take money from public in large and expand and become one of the leaders in 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 that particular particular product in the market. Okay, so you understand this whole process of resource mobilization in terms for the capital for a business. Great, an investment banker is available at every stage to facilitate this resource mobilization. Okay, now research and fund management. what is research and fund management so as the name suggests you join as a research analyst you want to develop as a research analyst so that you generate ideas based on your research and those ideas should essentially be uh, be relevant for the purpose of making money how does your career flow you join as a trainee analyst then you become junior then senior analyst then you become an assistant fund manager then fund manager and eventually you aspire to become the chief investment officer of either a firm or you start your own business as a chief investment officer okay what are the qualifications required to become an analyst so there are two form of analysis which is required one is the fundamental analysis and the other is the technical so in case of fundamental analysis you prefer mba in finance from good institute you can do an international cfa and aspire to become fundamental you need to get a good uh, opening in a good firm so that you can lead on that particular opening or chartered accountancy qualification is highly regarded for the purpose of knowledge in the fundamental domain because fundamental analysis is all about studying the balance sheet and the performance of the companies or the sector if you have ca plus an international cfa or if you have ca plus an mba in finance both these combinations are extremely deadly combination for the purpose of doing this job if you talk about technical analysis technical analysis is if you see the graph the way it is moving technical analysis is essentially the study of graphical pattern in stock market and try to predict what is going to happen in future through those graphical patterns so the common qualification which people use is a cmd qualification all the technical analysis is all about practicing and uh, and doing it in the market and learning by doing qualification is just the enabler to recognition which is given to you in the society that okay you know this subject okay 
Otherwise, your BTEC qualification, your engineering, your maths background, your statistical background, or your MSc background, these backgrounds are good enough for you to get inside the technical analysis. Okay. Now let's talk about the corporate finance. So corporate finance essentially is when you want, uh, uh, you become a part of corporate and take care of the finance function, which is the responsibility for buying for the uh, accumulation of capital and distribution of capital. You become a CFO, you become an internal auditor or a financial controller, or you become a financial risk manager for the purpose of managing the finance of a corporate. What are the qualification again? MBA in finance, international CFA, and chartered accountant account is a good enough qualification to become a good corporate finance professional. Okay. Now get inside the evolving career in finance. What are the evolving treasury functions is one of the most evolving career where uh, your responsibility is to manage the treasury functions in banks, in financial institutions, large corporates, SME corporates. What is the treasury functions? The treasury, uh, all of these guys have certain fund, right? And these funds have to be managed and generated more return and more returns are to be generated out of their cost of fund. A treasury guy is responsible for generating more return for the business so that the business is viable. So apart from the return which is getting generated by selling the core product of the business, there is an additional return which the company these days generate by actively involving themselves into treasury operations. What is the need? There is an increase. Okay. So difference between investment banking, investment management and banking. So uh, Siddharth, in investment management, sorry. Investment management is typically you're managing the investments, uh, just managing the investment. So like mutual fund investment management or hedge fund is the investment management. Whereas banking are the typically banking activities where your responsibility is to take money and deploy that money in the form of loan to corporates or to individuals in the form of personal loan, right? So investment management is to manage the investments and generate return for the client. Whereas banking is to lend. That's the core functioning of the banking. So why there is a need of uh, the uh, of uh, treasury operation? Because there is increased volatility in the asset prices. So to manage the uh, volatility risk of the asset, there is a need of active treasury desk. For example, ITC will have an active treasury desk which will try to hedge the commodity risk which ITC has. Say ITC Ashirwad brand of ATA. Their biggest risk is wheat prices going up. So what will the treasury desk do? They will try to hedge that risk either by actively participating in the treasury functions or uh, actively participating in the financial market or by getting into a long term contracts with the wheat producer in the market. There is increased complexity in the financial markets and those increased complexity needs a dedicated resource, team of resources to manage those complexities. There's an increased peer group competition. Most of these corporates are generating more return out of the peer group uh, activity, out of the more return out of treasury operations. So if one company is doing good in treasury operations, the other company really need to form a treasury operation which will help them to generate more return out of their business. And there's international competitions. There is a globalization. So since everyone is doing uh, managing the funds properly, even you have to not take the responsibility. So there is a huge opportunity because there are so many corporates in India, and there is a tremendous need in each and every reasonable size corporate to have an active treasury desk. Till date, the owner of the corporate was responsible for managing the treasury. Now there is a lot of need of professionals who can manage the treasury properly. Risk management. As you know, risk has become the reality in life, and there is, uh, there is, there are tools which can measure the uncertainty which we at times uh, see in our business. A risk management profile typically helps you to manage to to measure those uncertainties and try to find out tools which can negate those uncertainties uncertainties while you do the business. So, what are the different kind of risk involved? The business risk. Which is can be operational, which can be related to the product you are selling or the or the product you are buying for your business. There can be financial risk in which you have a credit risk, market risk, operation risk, and liquidity risk. All these risks these days can be measured by proper tools 
and there can be tools and techniques to combat the risk by using various hedging techniques. Professional trading, uh, that's where we come from. This is a this is typically the floor trading floor of UBS bank investment banking firm where there are a lot of people who are actively trading in market in various in various capacities. This is a typical image of an algo trading image where computers have been designed, the strategies have been designed, the artificial intelligence have been designed to do uh, algorithmic trading and actively involved in trading activities. So is trading an occupation? Yes, it is one of the occupation. In Indian society, there was a taboo till date, but now people have wholly accepted trading as a full-time occupation. And, and globally, obviously, people say that if you're a successful trader globally, you make a lot, a lot of money. And people, the immediate question is that, where is your Ferrari parked? So that is something which is a new generation. A lot of technology is involved in this. So if people who have a little bit of technology blend of mind and who want to build a full-time career, trading is also one of the career which you should seriously evaluate. There is a risk return payoff. People who are doing this, they know there is a risk. People who are doing this, they know there is a risk. So the risk is well calculated and it is scientifically deployed so that risk return trade-off is properly managed. Okay, there are some very, very famous traders have been in the world. Josh Soros is one of the names which comes in our mind when we talk about good traders. As an investor, we know Warren Buffett is known, but Josh Soros, uh, uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, they are one of the guys. They are one of the guys who who have done significantly good as a trader in the market. Sorry. Okay. Then you have Jim Rogers, who is a very very known, is a good trader, commodities trader. He has a phenomenal book called uh, Hot Commodities, which I which I recommend to everyone. So these, these are the people who are known as traders. And in India, you have Rakesh Ninjawala, also epitoming as a trader community. But generally, traders keep themselves low profile, and they just focus on making money and enjoying with that money. What are the qualifications? Unfortunately, there is no per se recognized trading qualifications. Trading is typically learned by involving yourself with the trading desk. So the courses, with are various courses by various trading firms. One of the you know, courses which we have developed is the trading course uh, where we teach people on the trading, on the research, on the advisory part and make a person a holistic financial market professional who can ultimately think of becoming either a research analyst or a trader or an advisor. So that's the program called CRTA which we have. Similarly, there will be other trading firms who will be having their own program. Either they will charge for those programs or they will recruit based on your pre-qualifications and then uh, take you through the nurture training programs which is more in-house in nature. We used to have the same program, now the same program has been brought into academy as a full-fledged course in offering for people. If you see the nearest course which can be recognized, which can be called a recognized course, then CMT is the, but that course is more oriented towards technical analysis. Whereas if you want to learn the trading cycle overall, then in-house courses by trading desk is the most relevant courses. Okay, a quick recap. I was extremely fast. Uh, if you see, I was extremely fast when talking about the career opportunities. But I guess I have maintained my time till 12 o'clock. This is a quick recap of uh, uh, various career options available and various qualifications available. Now, in case you have any query, I'm happy to take those queries because this is the last slide for the evening. So we are going to take queries with regards to career opportunities in finance. Whoever has queries. Uh, uh, can you mute yourself, whoever it is? And whoever has any query, uh, you have to post it on the chat window that I have a query and your, uh, your mute will be unmuted so that you can ask the query to me. No one has any query? Difference between algo trading and high frequency. Okay. So <clears throat> high frequency trading is part of algo trading. Algo trading is the broader term in which you have multiple forms of algo trading. 
high frequency trading when your algo is doing the trading on extremely high frequency basis similarly you have an algo trading which is low frequency in nature that means the number of trades done in a day is very low whereas high frequency number of trades done is very high so algo trading is a broad concept in which there are two different kinds of trading strategies see there is no qualification for professional trading as i said professional trading is to be learned by joining a professional trading firm and they will have either their in house course for professional trading or people like us who have trading desk and who have launched a program in trading academy and that program will ultimately teach you everything and then you can either become a part of us or you can think of doing trading on your own so there are no no structured uh, you know the government recognized qualification on professional trading can you prefer any tech application for doing chart trading well there are a lot of tech uh, tech applications for chart i think it has become a commodity if you ask me a specific questions i can uh, direct you to a specific software okay qualification required for risk management vidisha is frm because that's the uh, qualification which is coming up and a lot of people are uh, taking up that qualification but if you are a cfa to certain extent you will be recognized for the risk management profile as well but the general qualification which is picking up is the gar frm qualification prashant do you have any specific question on the tech application part because there are a lot of softwares like meta stock uh, okay in stock you can if you want a live good data then you can contact falcon and spider these are two very good softwares or we, we you can also think about investar investar is a very very good software which has fundamental data as well as technical data embedded in that software what is the program name that you are offering uh, for professional trading we have a program called certified professional trader and we have a holistic program called certificate in research trading and advisory it's a six month or six and a half month full time program which teaches you the trading the research and the advisory part in totality but if you just want to learn the trading then we only focus on the trading modules of that particular program it's a program which has been designed by me personally and uh, because i am a trader i have been we have been trading since 2003 and we have a desk of traders of almost 200 people here so we we'll know how to trade and how to generate return out of our capital we are a prop trading desk so that helps us to design a program which is appropriate to for everyone to learn the art of trading well uh, cpt uh, richard cpt we definitely intend to make it an online program but uh, you know the whole genesis of our academy is the fact that we are here and we can impart lot of education on market because of our resources because of us because of technology which we use in house so what we are trying to do is replicate everything in an online format through our online website called elearnmarkets.com and that website is essentially meant to convert all the trading methodology which is practical oriented into the online format so we will definitely be offering professional trading online there is a program which we have recently launched which is specifically for using chart as a trading tool which has been taken by vijay paul who is a known face in cnbc and in bloomberg and other news channels that program is called art and science of art and science of trading this program is highly acclaimed program in a very short period of time there are a lot of takers of this program in fact we had someone from china from korea who have also become part of this program recently we have someone from chicago who has come down from us to calcutta to to undertake the scrta program and art and science of trading actually becomes part of that crta program this program is actually both offline as well as online in fact i have request my team to post the uh, Uh, the uh, link of this program for the benefit of people who would be interested in taking the online art and science of trading program it's a very good program these programs are designed by us market participants who believe that they can add value 
to uh, to the takers of these programs. I will request my email markets team to uh, to uh, share the link about the art and science of trading. Yes, I will definitely. But show me right now the professional trading course is offline in nature, so you need to come to Calcutta, be with us, sit with us for those time period, and see how we are doing, and we will nurture you during that program. But if you want to focus on trading using charts and technicals, which is a very very scientific thing which we are doing, then art and science of trading is the program which we have already developed. But if you want to take a holistic understanding of trading, where you come across all the products in market, and you want to take exposure in all the products, not just technicals or options, but bond market, commodities, currency, everything, then you need to come down sit with us and be part of our financial market desk and learn it by practicing. But I will ask my team to send you some details about the offline program as well. Yes, it is a different program, but art and science of trading is a part a part of CPT program. So CPT is actually the four month program, and art of science, art and science of trading become parts of part of that program. I think my team, Richard, my team will definitely send some details about this program to you. But if you want to kickstart the uh, the trading part in terms of using the chart and how to make money from the chart, I think it's a good enabler for anyone who would like to undertake an online program. And if you are comfortable, once you're comfortable in the online part, then uh, you can we can ask you to come down for a month and be with us to to complete that learning of offline as well. So you do the art and science of trading online, and then you come here for a month. And we'll finish the other aspects of learning which we want to impart to you. So those customization can be done. Any other uh, question you have regarding the broader careers in financial markets? Qualifications. Now you guys know these are the predominant qualifications. I would say courses by Credit Academy is also quite valuable for you guys if you want to take some some step towards it. Uh, you can take some free courses which are there on Elan Markets. We are developing, continuously developing new programs and hosting it there. So that will, you know, kickstart that process of learning in financial market to you. And these are the uh, careers which are tried and tested. And these are the careers which are, uh, which are new generation careers which can be available for your careers. Okay, you are undergraduate and one is very interested in statistics. Okay. Uh, you are undergraduate student of which stream, Siddharth? Electrical. Okay. Richard, just give me a minute. I'll respond to Siddharth first. Uh, and you are interested in statistics. Okay. I I think I need to get back to you on this because. For an engineering student, anyway, statistics is part of your learning, right? It becomes part of your core course. So when you say that you want to take statistics to the next level, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say using statistics in financial markets and get into algorithmic trading kind of a thing? Oh, fantastic. So what you can do is you can start your preparation by learning the connect between statistics and financial market, which is you can learn the applied statistics part in the financial market. You can think about doing that by joining programs in this institute, uh, quantinstitute.com. This is again one of the uh, institute which offers courses on algorithmic trading, and statistics is, is a very core part of algorithmic trading. So they are the guys who can help you. In understanding statistics, uh, as far as our base is concerned, we can teach the basics part of the market, the applied statistics part of the market. But if you want to really understand the core of statistics, then we we are not the right people right now. We can refer you to Quantisti, who is our associate academy in Bombay, and they can help you with the statistics program in detail. Any course you offer of the connection of statistics and share analysis. Okay, uh, so Somesh, uh, let Siddharth and Shomesh, I think uh, probably we need to connect offline on this because your question needs to be understood understood properly because uh, 
Uh, we do have programs, but I don't. Uh, I am not sure those programs will help you to understand the core statistical tool. We definitely intend to develop more programs for those. But uh, one thing is an institute which has understanding because these are team of IT and IM who have developed this this institute and programs. So there are associate companies. Uh, we can refer you to them, but let's discuss this offline. I would request my team to keep note of this that we have to discuss with Siddharth and Somesh about the statistics and international market applicability program. Any other question? Anyone else? What are the options available for an Indian citizen in order to get some international trading exposure? Now, let me let me inform you guys that from India, you cannot trade international markets. That's the restriction with the regulators have. Except that you can trade U.S. equities, which I know because there are a lot of firms who are doing it. Because the U.S. The U.S. equity is not governed by Indian regulators. But if you want to trade international markets from India, I would seriously recommend that you check with your lawyer. According to me, you can't legally do that. Now, if you still want to do it, there are a lot of courses, or uh, there are a lot of people who are outside uh, India who are offering courses which is related to which is related to uh, uh, trading. So, like in Dubai, there's a company called DPTG which offers international trading exposures. Quant Institute has a program which can help you to get a job in international market for international trading. But from India, I will I don't think so. We should at all think about doing trading from India because there are not many firms who are legally doing it. There may be firms who are doing it illegally, but I don't want to comment on that. But there is a firm called Future First, which is very, very big, and they they operate on the outsourcing model where they have a parent outside and they trade from Indian market. But you have to check with your uh, lawyer on this point. I'm not the right person to answer this. Richard, sorry, coming back to you. What is the best career in finance as subject matter expert? Which subject matter expert? If you're talking about trading, or you're talking about research, I didn't get your question, Richard. Best career in finance as subject matter expert. So if you are thinking of trading career, then so each career has its own plus and minus. It's very difficult for me to answer the best right now. For me, whatever is the best, for you it may not be the best. I would say trading is the best career. But because I have a background of trading, my family has a background of trading, I can hold my nerves properly. So for it, it, it works for me, but it may not work for you. So the best career in finance will be totally dependent on you, your personality and your passion for the career. If you believe, if you are passionate for trading, go ahead, do trading. If you are passionate for research, go ahead, do research. It's totally your call. Now Richard, you talked about the CPD course and, and you wanted to do the course but you are outside. We will definitely do something where we can facilitate some kind of an online training for you. I'll ask my team to get in touch with you and make sure that uh, they can discuss. Because there are a lot of people outside India who have undergone our program, training programs, and online, and they are pretty satisfied with the way things are progressed for them. Okay, any other question? Looks like uh, we are done with the QA session. Uh, we have to get back to you. There are three people we need to get back to uh, related to their queries. My team will connect to you offline. Uh, I will request them to share their uh, contact details to my team uh, uh, through, uh, you can email it to them at uh, info at the rate or uh, you, can not, you can also email it to me if required at vivek at the rate and we will definitely get back to you with our best solutions and advice. Okay, so shall we close uh, this seminar for the day? Close this with a commitment from my side that keep keep in touch with us through our website. There are a host of lot of seminars which are lined up, all free of cost, and lot of value additions. All will be recorded as well. And at the same time, 
there is another seminar which i intend to take very soon on trading as a career so you please be look out for that seminar and be in touch with us okay thanks a lot everyone